Hi, everybody. So I want you to welcome Ray. Ray, the surfer girl today. And <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do, um, we're going to talk about the Anunnaki. We're going to talk about value, how we value each other in the world. And we're just going to get going and have a really beautiful conversation. So Ray is the first one that mentioned this, that the Anunnaki have returned to the solar system that I know of anyway. And I would like her to chat about that a bit. Yeah. So just brief backstory. So I had not, I didn't have any conscious knowledge of who the Anunnaki were when I first received contact from them. So I've been channeling light language for over 10 years now. And in probably about a year and a half ago, I started hearing the word Anunnaki in my light language and it was repetitive. And so I, I decided to like, you know, go on online and see if there was any knowledge of if this was a real word. So <clears throat> anywho, that's how I came into contact with the Anunnaki. Um, and after I got confirmation from the internet that that was indeed a real word, I didn't really read too much about it because I didn't want to be biased or influenced. I really wanted to see what channeling was going to come through um, without me knowing anything, like what was going to come through. Um, and their first message to me was, and this was a year and a half ago, but it, nobody really saw this this video. Only a couple hundred people saw it. But um, their first message was like, "We're coming back to right our wrongs. There will be a wreck. There has been a reckoning." That was the phrase that they gave to me. There has been a reckoning, <clears throat> um, and now uh, we're returning to basically undo um, what we did but at the time i didn't know what they were talking about i didn't know who, what they did i just knew that they were coming back to fix whatever they did um so then that was kind of the beginning of this whole journey this rabbit trail of looking into like the origin origins of the human species origins of the different ets and how everyone worked together with this human experiment so um they recently have partnered with me to bring us current the last couple of weeks they've been like okay we're th so they have a specific dialect of light language that they're using to undo the curses the black magic the blood magic um that was done through them so there are not just me but other anunnaki star seeds waking up right now also gaining access to this light language um mm -hmm. I'll, can I um, can I speak light language on here? Just like a little brief. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just do a little like brief so you can feel the frequency of it. If you who's watching this, you know, does light language, like tunes into light language yourself. So Anunnaki frequency. Okay. So that's the frequency. It's very in your core. It's very it's kind of in the back of your throat kind of guttural um so yeah it, it that's the anunnaki language um and so yeah a lot of people have been brought to me that have needed this we've been uh we already reversed the black the blood magic of the o negative bloodline okay that one has been healed um and that's the only one so far that i've been able to heal the whole entire bloodline but i know there's other people that are doing this there's other people not just me like i i haven't met them but i do know that they exist because i can feel that i'm not the only one doing yeah. this um, we all have our yes exactly so um you watching this you know this could be the activation for you uh, to be like, oh, I'm, I'm one of those people. Oh, I can do that. I can do this. I can reverse that, you know? Um, so yeah, it's very powerful stuff. Yeah. So I think I had heard of the Anunnaki years and years ago, but it's never anything I really thought about until my higher self brought them in as the bad guys in the whole scenario of what was going on on earth and why the dome got put up and all of that, but that was because they split. So, and I think this is important just for context 
So basically they came into this solar system and the solar system had just gone through tremendous pain because planets were ripped away from their dwarf suns and things had changed and there were um, lots of scars left behind. So the whole solar system was in recovery at that point. And they showed up and they're like, oh, we like this planet. Let's stay. But they had to drop in consciousness to come here. So when they did that, they split because third density is a polarized density. It's a short density. Like, you know, how long you're in it is a short duration of time. But there's a lot of learning, which means there's a lot of friction. Mm -hmm. So the Anunnaki did a lot of, I would say, heinous things, really horrible things. Um, but they did it in that context. So them coming back to heal it, it's the perfect time for that because this solar system is moving into fourth density positive and the whole universe is ascending. And it's beautiful that they're choosing to do that because yeah. <clears throat> one thing that's also come through in the channeling is only we can undo what we have done. Uh, so that's why it's also important to note that the Anunnaki star seeds are part of every lineage and every race on this planet mm -hmm. uh, because we are here to heal and activate every lineage, every bloodline. Um, and this is where people get the idea of, oh, this is a slave planet. Oh, this is a prison planet. That's why it feels like that because part of the heinous things that they did is modify human DNA they literally put J seals caps on the ends of our DNA so that we could not evolve past a certain point. Yeah. So, and with the reincarnation wheel, they messed that up for a while. So a lot of souls kept getting stuck here just yeah. over and over. They kept reincarnating here and they couldn't leave. Um, so it has been, um, but the thing is, is we're also not taking into account that what we view as earth, our planet you know, is just like a quarter of the actual planet Earth. So we're all, we can't forget about that too. So this section of the planet, yes, we have been in a little enslaved dome and we yeah. have been, um, a lot of us have been stuck here. So that is a valid viewpoint and it's a valid way of feeling because it's real. Um, but I think the, the hope, the good news is that um, all of that's been dismantled and that's why all of these like celebrities and whatnot po politicians are currently being exposed held accountable going to jail um it's all related right it's all yeah. connected we have the like the light the the beings who are of service to the collective good have tipped into the power has swayed into their favor um so some big big things are going to change pretty quickly yeah i agree with that it's absolutely happening quite fast and it's the truth it feels like this is the year that all the truth comes out because mm -hmm. the truth that's coming out um it's going to speed up but it's also kind of amazing because it's been hidden for so long and you're just like wow they just told yeah. us that, you know, like there was a, and I won't say the word, but I'll spell it. There was a C-L-O-N-E person and it was an actress and she was talking about how she had five of them. And oh, then wow. the guy, the commentator said, oh, well, are you one of them? And she goes, I can't disclose that information oh my so god i was just like oh there it is they put it out there you know and it's been yeah. put out before but that was the most blatant discussion i'd ever seen yeah it was quite funny actually i saw a video of a celebrity um literally glitching out like on stage and yeah. i was like the way that the video was it was obvious that it was real and it wasn't like photoshopped and i was just like Oh, wow. 
wow like yeah i mean i believe that's another thing we could talk about briefly is the whole concept of believing things without having any physical confirmation it's like we don't have to that's why we ha- that's why it's important to get in touch with our own inner knowing mm-hmm. so that you don't need confirmation to be able to know what's true exactly um and i will say that my life has been a bright shiny example of this because i have been prevented from having physical confirmation of aliens demons i've never seen any of this stuff with my with my two eyes i've never seen a ufo in the sky i you know that part of my journey is to show people it's possible to find the truth without actually seeing it first yeah it goes back to um there's a movie where they talk about the abilities that we have and they have all these little kids and they've all got blindfolds on and they're sitting around and they're reading books with their third eye. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and they can tell you what color you're holding up and all the stuff. And it's like a school. So yeah. it's just amazing what you can do with your pineal gland, which is another reason it's been revered by the dark you know right and now we're taking it back so that's a whole right. nother subject but oh yeah this is, my <laughs> this is Raphael. so cute he's been integrating the consciousness of Raphael, archangel Raphael, and assisting with the transmutation of you know just the earthly stuff and um you know, Archangel Raphael has been integrating into his dragon form. So this poor little guy has really just been struggling. He's got like scales falling off his body. We've been doing so much energy work on him. Um, but anywho, he's my little munchkin. Yeah. Little munchkin. Um, so yeah, just the whole concept of not having to see something. I think that's important. I There was a phrase in one of my writing, uh, I guess, poetry or whatnot the other day, seeing is not believing. Because, um, you know, a lot of people say seeing is believing, seeing is believing. It's like, no, it's not. It's more the other way around. When we really believe, then we see confirmation, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. That's a concept that I think has been pushed by the 3D. Like, Mm -hmm. just, it's been a program that's been run in a lot of people. Yeah. You almost have to break through it. And speaking of programs, so the concept of separation being negative, right? So uh, differences being a negative thing rather than rather than seeing well i'm i'm specifically thinking of like how every race is a hybrid race i mean when it comes to the source what what race was the first race to ever exist or what color was the first race that ever existed all the colors so all the colors on the spectrum are source source is the essence of all the colors right so all the colors have equal value they're not all the same no they're all different and they all serve different functions and do different things and carry different codes and different right but the value still is equal so i think that's the important distinction that we got to make yeah the value the value of a being is the same whether you're an injured being So say you were a soldier and you went off to war and you lost one of your arms, but you're still just the same value, even though you can't perform the same task, you're just the same value, whether you're green, yellow, pink, white, brown, whatever color you are, whether you're neon, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, we all have different skills. We all have different um, things that have come with 
the body that we chose. So like there are certain aspects, like if somebody comes into the O negative body, then there's certain things they can do that someone else can't do. So one thing is they don't feel pain the same way. So they're not as traumatized by pain. Mm -hmm. And I think that most O negative women that give birth, like it's not as traumatic as other women who give birth. And that that's a whole nother subject, birth, giving birth. But there's different things that are aspects of what blood type you choose, what color you choose when you pop in. It's also, you know, you're choosing your parents. There's all these things that you're choosing and then it's going to work for your mission. And then there's all the different ages of the people, you know, the ages of the soul that lives in the person. Mm -hmm. So that soul could be brand new and maybe they were a cat last time and now they're human and they don't have uh, any idea what they're doing. They're totally yeah. brand new at it. Or maybe they have lived for millions of years as a being, whether it's a human being or an ET or an elf or whatever. So right. it's really important that we realize everybody has the same value. Do we have to hang out with everybody and try and make it work? Not necessarily, but we need to make sure that we don't think that we're above or below them. Yeah. And it's also important to remember that the Anunnaki were actually not the creators of humans. Like, I think some people are also thinking that. And because they're also, the Anunnaki are also called the Sumerian gods. So some people are thinking that they're gods, but it's like they were perceived as gods because they were very large they were these light beings they were coming from a higher dimension of course they're going to be perceived as gods or angels um but they're just ets they're just ets just like to them we're ets you know what i'm saying like to them yeah. we're an et um so i think that's important to remember and that's that's also why I want to say again that they've come into every lineage every race of humanity because they want to help heal humanity as a whole um but there were other ets that donated parts of their dna as well yeah, 24 um, i think yeah yeah quite a few there yeah it's like 20 it, a lot it's not just yeah. one and among each of those species all of them have mixed dna too right like yeah. So who, I don't think anyone really knows the first, I don't think there was one first species. I think that it's ha it all has to do with sacred geometry. You know, everything comes back to, like, if you go back to the singularity, right? Like when things started to originally split and divide, um, when, I guess the real question would be, when was consciousness created or is consciousness just everything is consciousness all that is right it is all that is um and i think the first beings were created directly from source and the biggest the most important thing about them is their size they mm -hmm. were huge you know but they were different in different planets you know um so they looked different but they were really really big <laughs> yeah and i think like you said there were a lot of different beings that were created simultaneously they they i feel like each okay this is what i feel i feel like each planet started to grow and eventually it created um life right like animal life and then eventually it got to a point where the planet itself fostered um more evolved consciousness basically yeah. and it could it could it could be a container for more evolved consciousness so it feels to me that these life forms these et life forms just naturally evolved simultaneously all over the cosmos and then we yeah. all started finding each other 
Yeah, you know, exactly. And then we're all arguing about who was here longer. And it's like, I think we've all been here probably about the same. Like, we've all just now we're all just finding each other. I don't know. It's very interesting. And I think it's about like how long trillions of years, you know, have gone by. Yeah. yeah. And then all the species that have intermingled and like, mm -hmm. so cool to think about. It is. The most, like, I think one of the most beautiful things is that with the human being, which, you know, we're the human beings are listening to this. Um, we the have, ETs are listening too. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're listening. But we have the advantage of all those different pieces of DNA. And it gives us like a powerhouse. So we, I mean, considering what has been done to the human body, we're still here. Mm -hmm. um, so the human body is amazing. And that's why it was created. It was created to be amazing. So be so I'm getting it. with your form that you have. So I'm getting like a download right now. So <clears throat> I'm seeing how humans are different because we're the most messed with as far as like a lot of the other species in the, in the ETs right now. They evolved more naturally without a lot of intervention from outside species. But humans, that's the difference. That's why we're so different. Yeah, just that's the word. I, I don't want to say any, like, it's not better or worse. It's just that's why we're so different. Because we have been given these modifications over the time as we've been evolving. And most other species, they didn't have someone coming in and altering them and then leaving. Like, no. So we're like these we're like the 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 universe all the ets have been creating us like we're like their their little their prized project of like how can we make the most efficient living being so i thought of this the other day i don't know who was talking to me it might have been my one of my higher selves but it was like what if we made cuz i was thinking about tuning forks and i was thinking about frequency healings and i was like what if we made an instrument, like a musical instrument, that could tune itself? Nice. That could tune itself. That's, I think this was part of the original concept for humans. What if we made an instrument that could tune itself? What if we made something that could have all of its own self-maintenance so it didn't have, need any outside maintenance? What if we could create something that could literally evolve and reprogram itself as it needed for its own evolution? So we've got the AI concept so it's a mixture of ai it's a mixture of, you know what i mean it's something yeah. that like i feel like this was just the creation of like what if we like trying to think of the coolest thing you could make ever that's what humans are the coolest thing that the coolest thing that the universe could think of making is humans like we're yeah. it we're the and i'm not saying that from an ego perspective at all not like we're better but like we're the most complex organisms. Yeah. Well, and if you think about it, I always got I always got the Lyrans created humans. Mm -hmm. um, and they are one of the oldest groups that are here. Um, but they did it to basically create someone amazing, create an amazing race. And they did it with source permission. Yeah, they wanted to create a race that had all of the benefits of every race. Yeah. And they, the ones that are not on Earth that haven't been messed with over and over and over again, they're doing so well. They're doing so amazing. So I think that that's what we're we're striving for our bodies to get to that point. And mm -hmm. um, maybe we will, maybe we won't like in the body that we're in now, but we're going to get closer and every generation after we'll get closer to that. I mean, I honestly think the next generation that's here already 
is there. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. But it's a beautiful thing to watch. And we're going to come out of, we're coming out of jail. We're coming out of the prison. Mm -hmm. And our DNA is being released to be what it's supposed to be. Yes. So. Well, the Tartarians are a good example. Yeah. Of like humans that didn't get messed with as much <laughs> right um and they're taller than us they're you know they have full access to their psychic abilities like i mean it's pretty yeah cool. they've been I, in third density yeah versus fourth because some of the humans are living in a much higher density than we are so yeah. look how great the tartarians did I get that they live, you know, to 400 years or whatever, and that's normal mm -hmm. in yeah. third density. Right. So imagine like, yeah, it's so cool. So yeah. cool. I'm trying to think if there's anything else about the Anunnaki that we want to touch on. Um, I just feel like it's really good to have discernment about who you're talking to. And it's also really important to realize all of us have had a dark lifetime or yeah. probably several. Yes, yeah, we definitely. have thousands of lifetimes, a lot of us. And we don't want to judge a group as, oh, they did something bad. They're permanently bad. That's not, that's not how it works. It's all about learning in this the way the universe has been up to graduation is all about learning. Yeah. And just because in our time, the Anunnaki have only been gone for like what a thousand years or whatever it is. Um, I don't even know. That's not an accurate number, but the, no. the, I'm just giving an example of that. The time is different here and there and wherever they are. So time is very relative. So even if our perception is like, oh, they've only been gone this amount of time, they could be, they've actually in their collective consciousness, they've been gone for eons, right? And they've had so much more time than we think to right. evolve, to heal, to mm -hmm. learn. And that's why they're now able to come back and be like, wow, we see it. Now we can see what we did, our part, how we could have acted differently, right? Um, or yeah so they've had time we have to allow them to evolve and i know it's hard um but i think letting go of well acceptance of death i think we that this is a good segue into that because mm -hmm. accepting that the old version of someone actually can die like you can actually become a new person um and maybe it's hard to believe until you do it for yourself but it is real and that's what's happened with the Anunnaki. They have evolved into a new, beautiful, um, united version of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it's time for them. And it's, it's karmic. It's divine mm -hmm. that they're coming back to clean up the mess. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that is part of their evolution, that they clean up the mess. And then also we have to realize that a lot of um, earthlings are gonna be leaving as well. And that death is not the way that we've been taught. So death is not the end of the person. It's not the end. So it's, I think it's more like the um, Aborigine way is how we'll go back to celebrating someone leaving but like we'll have a party and the person will be there and then they'll go off somewhere and they will pass away because they're ready to go to their next lifetime yeah, yeah. we're gonna have as we move forward we will have a lot more control over when we when we go yeah and not control necessarily but like a knowing of when it's time a knowing of when it's time and trusting that that's time and just go and literally having the party and walking into the desert knowing that it's time because you know you know what i mean like not doubting or questioning or fearing or trying to live longer or because the thing is is your soul is just ready for its next adventure it's not like you're actually dying it's just that this 
vessel has experienced its maximum amount of goodness right yeah um it's like you're gonna go put on a new party dress or a new party like suit yeah. or whatever just time to change outfits yeah yeah so and i think that for so long it's been drilled into everybody that it's such a massive tragedy to pass away um i will say when i was little and had my near-death experience i definitely was not excited to stay after i got to see a glimpse of how mm. calm and nice and easy it was not being here so i yeah. think it's important you know that we realize it's a gift for them it's you know it it's been turned into a trauma by people that like to harvest that energy exactly and we have to just remember that always that there's always an agenda like you have to think about like even the words we speak i was thinking about the word mindful the other day and i was like huh that's not a, i don't really want to say that anymore I'll, I'll be i'll say that i'm present but mindful you're saying your mind is full i don't want my mind yeah. to feel full i want my mind to feel not empty either i just want it to feel clear Right. Or you, know, you could say mind, I'm mind clear, or <laughs> I don't know, but I just think that, you know, saying something like I'm present is more. Yeah, or awareness, whatever. Yeah, I'm aware. Instead of, yeah. Yeah, mindful. I never clear, thought of that one. Clear minded or clear headed or, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. pause. Sorry. We're back. And uh, Ray's going to talk about frequency. So I know that coming up for our master healer workshop, Honey is going to be focusing on energy shielding and self-protection. Mm -hmm. And one thing to remember about frequency is a lot of us are saying, okay, so when you think about the concept of ascension, we get the, we get in our minds, the visual of going up, right? Going higher, but more than ascension, it's actually expansion. So it's not going, I guess, it is going up, but it's also going down and sideways. So um, we're vibrating at a more expansive, but what that also means is layered. There's more layers, uh, but also that means the most outer layer is vibrating the fastest. So it's not actually the highest, but it's vibrating the fastest. So just how like with, with sound frequencies, uh, lower notes are like, wah, wah, wah. you know, higher notes are like, okay yeah. so that's literally it's basically just um less separation so more extreme so lower means more extreme between high and low higher just means um less contrast more contrast is lower less contrast is higher um and so when you think about the the veil is thinning or seen through the veil well when there's when there's uh, no contrast, you can just see all. You can just see it all. Yeah. So if you think about that, like that's literally what ascension is. It's expansion through less contrast. Anywho, yeah. So I just wanted to talk about that. Oh, I love that. Important. Yeah. Important. That's really important. That's a great way to explain it. Yeah, and no one's better. No one's like above or below anyone. Right? right you may be encompassing someone fully with your energy because you're more expanded than they are but that doesn't mean that you're above them in any way right yeah yeah i always feel like it um as we go up in density or i won't say up as we change in density we encompass more light yes yeah because that's what density is. It's it's a it's a separation from light, so that you can the contrast of yeah the separation of light. So you just less and less contrast. So that just basically means more light is able to come in until you're one with the light. And that's I think yeah. what enlightenment is is being one with the light. <laughs> exactly. It's very simple actually. So just think of it as can you see through the tissue? or through this like what is more dense right yeah yeah that's interesting i like that i like it when it gets more and more simplified it makes mm -hmm. more and more sense 
And I like how we can say things in so many different ways so that the under the understanding or the inner standing comes in to every every person in their own perception. Yeah. Like they're figuring it out. And it's like, oh, right. okay, they said this. So I actually get it. That's why it's so important for everyone to try mm -hmm. to repeat what they're hearing. Try to say what you're hearing in your own words to see if you actually understand it, understand it. Because if you do that for yourself and then you talk about it, there are going to be people who hear what you're saying, you, the person watching this, and who are like, wow, I've never heard it said that way. And now it makes so much sense to me. Just like people tell me that all the time, like, oh my gosh, Ray. You just explain that in a way that my brain, it just clicked, right? But I do that for people, but you can also do that for people, you know? Yeah. Um, that's why we're all important because everyone is going to connect to us in a specific way. It, like it just trickles down. Yeah. And your energy is going to work for some people and for some people it won't. Exactly. And it's like, absolutely there are so many, fine. So many people call me crazy. So many people like, don't um, they don't get it they don't see it um they literally think i'm looney tunes and that's okay to them i am looney tunes to them i'm literally a crazy person and that's okay like from my perspective they are an unawake person you know and that's okay too like it's just that is what it is yeah it's all about the role that they're playing and that we're yeah. playing and yep so I think this is really important. I think that's a good note to end on. Um, but just taking care of ourselves through this transition, I think is a really beautiful thing. And thinking about how we're doing things from the inside out now, instead of the outside in. Exactly. Yeah. You have any fun oh, yeah. things? I think we should mention our master healer <laughs> workshop. It's been a week from friday today it's on the 27th january 27th um it's going to be like a two and a half hour workshop there's going to be two different breakout sessions you can choose between one with me with honey or with aubrey and then you can switch breakout rooms in the second time we break out so you can get to experience two of the teachers um and then we'll have multiple like where we're all together for multiple points during the event yeah um during so yeah i just i want people to know about that it's 99 dollars. it's going to be like i said about two and a half hours um, I'm very excited. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited too. And we've been learning, you know, just as a group, you, me and Audrey have been learning a lot of amazing new things lately. We're going to be able to share those with you. So yeah, it's kind of shocking. Sometimes you're like, really? Wow. I'm doing that now. Hmm. Yeah. You know? So those are the things that we're going to share is like advanced stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Aubrey will be doing, yeah, we'll each be doing a specific topic. I'm going to add more details on my website, but that is where people can book if they want to. Book we'll put that on. below. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Thank you. Yeah. I love you all. Mwah. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Lots of love.